okay, demonic. Yep. And basically, it's it goes back to the uh, Luciferian cults. Mm-hmm. Okay, so basically, these people are Luciferians. I know. I, I really yeah. do believe that as well. I mean, listen, some of them are into Gaia worship. Some of them are into earth-based oh, yeah. religion. Yeah. Some of them. You know, someone I was talking to. I was talking to uh, Rob Jacobson and uh, Aaron Dykes, kind of about this. The uh, you know today, actually, we were we were discussing, it, and then we're like, how does somebody actually get into like st- straight up devil worship? And I'm like, well, it starts out with paganism. It starts out with this. You know, question right. your right. mind. Do you want to go into paganism? And they tell you, oh, this is a Wiccan religion, and it's all earth-based and has nothing to do with Satanism. And then as you progress through the rituals in this one, they say, well, you know, there's this other flavor over here, this Druidic flavor or this Babylonian uh, flavor, or, you know, um, th- there's just so many of them. And then they branch out to this. And then they find out, well, you know, this is also incorporated into Luciferianism. And actually, Lucifer just means knowledge. Uh, in fact, if you look at uh, the America's Secret, Secret Beginnings series, and uh, I think it's the Manly P. Hall uh, Museum or the Theosophical Society Museum. I know that there's a bunch of Nicholas Rorick uh, busts and Albert Pike busts there, and they talk to a gentleman there, and he says, Lucifer just means the light or the knowledge. And then, you know, that's his opinion or that's his view, but then you go even further and you read the writings of someone like Manly P. Hall or Blavatsky, and they actually switch it around and say, well, actually, it's Lucifer is not only the light and knowledge, he is the actual Christ-like figure, and it's a reverse role, and he is the good figure, and Jesus is the devil. And it just gets so blown out. It's incrementalization. And I, I do wonder who's out there at the top that knows all this stuff and is truly into Luciferianism. I mean, I've gone as far as to read, you know, the 13 Bloodlines of the Illuminati by Fritz Springmeier. A lot of great info in there. But at the same time, you know, there's that chapter in there where he says, you know, the devil physically walks the earth every 28 years, and he's actually seen a physical picture of him. I think that yeah. might be going a little bit too far. Listen, hey, you don't say... Yeah, well, the thing is that you don't say that you've seen a physical picture of Satan unless you can produce that physical picture. I mean, let's say tomorrow... And it couldn't even be tomorrow. It would have to be some 20 years ago before Photoshop was invest, invented for me to even believe, you know, a certain picture of Satan could be real. But I see this picture and I'm like, oh, my God, this is this is a devil winged being with a tail and the whole this is Satan. I better be able to produce that photo if I'm going to write about it and say this is the real deal. You know what I'm saying? So I, I always I always I always pull back when it gets too religious because you don't really know other than people's fruits or their writings about this stuff. But I think the point that I try to get across to uh, everybody is that the majority of the people that go to this Bohemian Grove, at least the familiar faces that we know, present themselves as Christian conservatives. And what they do at the Bohemian Grove, everything from dress up like women and uh, do pagan worship, is completely outside of the Christian faith. And that to me, yeah, oh, absolutely. And it makes them outward hypocrites. So that's what I really like to point out. And I also like to point out to those that promote, you know, zeitgeist and zeitgeist addendum to no end. And I like those movies, by the way, but there are definitely a lot of things that I have problems with. And I've been trying to get Peter Joseph to come on the program so we can discuss that. But he discusses how all religion is evil and we need to all drop our own religions. Well, The plan of these globalists is to drop all these religions for one, you know, earth-based type religion, number one. And number two, they have a religion, and their religion is a pagan one where they do these rituals. So if religion really doesn't mean anything and there's nothing to it, and by the way, I'm a pretty secular, but I'm just saying for me, I'm a a pretty secular guy. If this religion doesn't mean anything, why are the most powerful people in the world practicing it? You know, well, you know, that, the thing is, the, the Antichrist wants to turn around and unite all religions under himself. That's what it says in Revelations, brother. My, uh, I always say mm-hmm. that it, it's, uh, it's my favorite book in the Bible, but it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a book. That's the, uh, that's the yeah, pun. I it really is. I wanted to bring something else out, too. You know, sure. uh, there's a lot of people that I'm friends with mm-hmm. here in the Springfield area. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have uh, a lot of buddies that are in the National Guard, and I also have a high school friend who's a colonel in the Army. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys do not back what is going on, Mm -hmm. okay? You know, a lot of these guys are pretty straight-up and stand-up constitutionalists. Mm -hmm. They support the United States Constitution, and uh, there's a lot of them out there in the military that do not back what is taking place. And uh, they are extremely afraid of this, uh, what they call the uh, open diplomacy, where they're bringing in foreign troops onto our soil. 
Mm -hmm. Well, they should be, but the problem is that a lot of those guys, and I thank you for the call, that um, <clears throat> are against what's going on, they're overseas, and they're going to be kept overseas in a capacity where you know they're just told what to do, and they obey their their commander, uh, you know, their commanding officer, uh, the orders from high up. They're not going to send those guys back to the United States to be part of the domestic security force. They're like you said, going to send NATO forces and the U.S. troops that have a pension for violence or don't really care that they're on American soil. They don't basically. They're not the ones that read into the Constitution and Bill of Rights. They don't take their oath to uh, serve against enemy any enemy, foreign or domestic. Seriously, they just take orders, and that to me is very very. Dangerous. On the other side, we're going to try to shoot through the final callers. We're going to try to go to Eric, Samuel, Jim, Anonymous, and Robert in five short minutes. That's five short minutes. Remember, if you missed any of the program, and I got to tell you, I have loved this week's programs. I was kind of down on myself last week. I didn't think I did really great radio. Done some pretty good radio this week. We got a podcast over at theinfowarrior.com where you can listen. 24-7, 365 on the Listen Live until the next show, until the next show over at theinfowarrior.com right now. See, there it is. Oh, there's my hand. Oh. Back after this. Whoa! All right, final segment of the Info Warrior. Everybody's going to get 30 seconds. Get your point out quick. Don't tell me I'm great. Don't ask me how I'm doing. It's the final segment. Let's go to Samuel in Florida. Samuel, you're online. Well, you know, in Egypt, in the final days... The, uh, the uh, Pharaoh was getting his uh, genitalia washed by his servants, and they were selling out their country to Greece because they were buying cheap imports. And that's what's happening in America. Our presidents and our emperors and our rulers are having their genitalia washed by all the other countries, and they're selling us out. Selling us out to the Federal Reserve. Great point. Thanks for the call. Jim in Arkansas, you're on the line. Yes, sir, Jim. I want to keep week, you. Yes. Uh, earlier this week, Alex made an offhanded remark about things as innocuous as vitamin C being made uh, prescription drugs. Yes. Um, well, well okay. here's the innocuous remark. I mean, the FDI, FDA is trying to take Cheerios to task for saying that it lowers your cholesterol, and they're going to try to treat it as a drug. So, in other words, they're trying to come carte blanche on anything that says that it's good for you. Ah, okay. That, okay, listen, just, take, just yeah, yeah, just listen, just go check out FDA takes Cheerios to task for boastful claims. That's bull. They did. Listen, Cheerios is something you give babies. It's good for you. Get over it, FDA. But they want to criminalize anything that could be healthy for us because they're trying to make us nutrient deficient, trying to take down our immune systems so that we might, might be susceptible to something like a swine flu. I thank you for the call. Let's go to Anonymous. Anonymous, you're on the line. Quick comment on the IANA ICANN call. Right yes. idea, but I think it's the wrong company. I think the right company is New Star. N e u s t a r. New mm -hmm. Star is to the telephone infrastructure as IANA is to the internet in infrastructure. New Star owns New Level, the dot biz dot us registry, which is the ICANN registry that asks to be released from pricing restrictions. So, what what's your point about New Star? New Star is the real enemy. ICANN is not. No, I'm saying that IANA doesn't have the direct relationships with ICANN that New Star does via New Level and the request of pricing freedom. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Writers at InfoWars.com, articles at InfoWars.com. This is a very interesting subject that I don't think uh, we at InfoWars quite understand and really the Patriot community in general understands because it's really not in the mainstream media. Somebody out there, help us out. Robert in Texas, final caller. Hey, Jason, I don't know if you got to check it out, but I uh, do have MySpace about my video at Funkmaster5 uh, channel on YouTube uh, where I called in Glenn Beck and shocked him about the thermite. He acted like an idiot. Just wanted to uh, throw that out there, and thank you for letting me plug my show last week. Hey, you got it. It's YouTube.com slash Funkmaster, F-I-V-E. Uh, if you want to go check out him talking to Glenn Beck about the thermo or the nano thermite that was found, the unexploded nano thermite that was found at the scene of the World Trade Center, written by Stephen Jones, peer reviewed out there. I thank you for the call, folks. Again, hey, no problem, brother. Again, you want a great movie? Well, now it's free with the purchase 
of Endgame, another great movie out there. There it is, Endgame. That's right. With the purchase of Endgame right now, we are giving away Reflections and Warnings with Aaron Russo. If you're not familiar with Aaron Russo's work, you really need to be. This is the guy that is behind America, Freedom to Fascism. This is the guy that brought Gary Franchi in to do so many great things. If you missed the Franchi Fest, we got him up over at the InfoWarrior.com. We had him in studio with William Lewis, had Sander Hicks on yesterday, had uh, German Talis, who had to have a girl in a wheelchair with cerebral palsy hit the stand in a Girl Scout uniform with a puppy to try to say that he assaulted her. Beat the rap, because sometimes the truth does win out first, folks. And that's what this is about, the truth and winning. Take a swing, knock it out of the park. We'll be back on Monday. It's the Info Warrior.